Texas has a compelling case to present the playoff committee. Longhorn head coach Steve Sarkeesian joins us from Arlington, Texas. Coach, number one, thanks for joining us. Congrats on the win in the Big 12 championship game. If you could be in the room with the playoff committee when the topic of Texas comes up, what would you tell them? Well, I'd tell them it's a complete football team. You know, we, we play really good defensive football. You know, we held one of the nation's top rushers to, I think, 30-something yards today. Uh, we're a dynamic offensive football team. We can score a variety of ways. We're really good at the line of scrimmage. You know, we're, we're good. We're good in the running game uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, we're really good on special teams. We've got electric punt returner, electric kick returner. So if you're talking about one of the top four teams in the country, one of the top best teams in the country, I think we're right there because of the versatility of our team, our ability to play at the line of scrimmage and the playmaking ability on the outside. Coach, should Florida State win later, do you feel that your program belongs in over an unbeaten ACC champion? Well, I think that's that's the discussion, right, for everybody. Uh, at the end of the day, as we look at it, we look at the, the challenging schedule that we had. You know, we had to play with our backup quarterback for two weeks this, this year, too. We'd be the top 25 team with our backup quarterback in there in Kansas State. Um, but, but in the end, it's like, is the playoff about the four best teams or deserving teams? And we all don't get to play the same opponents, right? We're all in different conferences. We dip, play different non-conference schedules. And now they need to assess the body of work. And I think we're playing football at a high level right now. Uh, our quarterback's playing really well. And uh, like I said, I think the versatility of this team is something that uh, we're probably most proud of. You assess your body of work. Do you feel unequivocally that you are one of the four best teams in the nation right now? Well, I do, but unfortunately I'm not on that committee. Uh, that, that's, that's, for, that's their job. But uh, hopefully we, we put a product on the field here uh, this season. Uh, we put a product on the field here today uh, that, uh, that they can respect. And in the end, if they put us in there in the top four, uh, we'll be fired up about it. Uh, I would put this team up against anybody in the country and, and like our chances, it's always going to be hard. We get in that final four. Uh, if they don't, I'll respect their decision, but, but hopefully we get an opportunity to get in there. Coach, thanks for your time and good luck when the news comes out tomorrow. Thank you guys. Hook them. All right, Brady, what's our favorite word this time of season? Chaos. Chaos. And we are staring at some chaos, some potential chaos, at least. We know with the Texas win, Ohio State essentially eliminated from the Final Four. Is Texas, as of now, where we sit here Saturday night in your top four? Yeah, I think they look like one of the top four teams to me, one of the best teams in college football. They're a complete team. When you look at them, you heard Coach Stark talk about their defense. That's flown under the radar. You know, Quinn Ewers gets a lot of credit. Earlier, Jonathan Brooks, when he was healthy, gets a lot of the credit. And look, they've been able to overcome the injury to Brooks. Uh, C.J. Baxter, Jaden Blue, almost had 200 rushing yards today uh, on the ground for them. That They've been solid the whole way. And Ewers basically had his best performance of his college career when they needed to show out the most. So this looks like one of the top four teams in the country. The big question is what happens the rest of the way around them? And can you get in as a 12-1 and conference champ over an undefeated conference champ? Because I think Coach Stark put out the biggest thing. They don't play the same amount of conference games. They don't play the same non-conference schedule. Texas went on the road and beat Alabama in Bryant-Denny. And that's arguably one of the best wins of the entire football season. Yeah, but, hey, I agree, Brady. Texas has been dominant. They have been consistent. And they showed that visually they look like one of the best in the country. But But listen, there's a couple (laughs) matches that are still going on that need to happen. (laughs) That's true. Because if Alabama wins the SC Championship, when they're currently winning, got to finish, they get in. Now, Florida State, if they win tonight convincingly, conference champ, undefeated, more deserving? Are they deserving to get in? Yes. Yes. But if you're looking at the four best teams, I think Texas deserves to be in the playoff picture because if you put Florida State and Texas versus each other right now, I'll have Texas winning. Yeah, it all all depends on the criteria that the committee uses. Best and deserving. Florida State, obviously, you can make a strong case, but how are they with a potential third-string quarterback playing here a little bit later tonight? I just want to credit all, uh, Coach Sark, the right. job that he did, 12-1 conference champ, Texas is back, guys, whether or not they get in the college football playoff, what a year they had. But I'll tell you what, this team, if Quinn Ewers plays like this, potentially in a college football playoff, they can beat anybody with that defense, with the ability of Baxter running the football. But I'll tell you what, Coach, the last two games, they've outscored opponents 106-28. to They've been dominant. They've looked like a top-four team. I certainly think they have a strong argument to get in. Uh, In my mind, there's no doubt, no doubt, 
Things are already booing? Yeah, they saw you talking, Coach. <laughs> right when you started talking, they had booed. We can't hear you. So listen, it's no doubt, and I know we're watching the Tide, if the Tide wins, and somehow they get in over Texas, I walk in, if I was coaching to the AD and said, get rid of the non-conference schedule, play an easy one, because it doesn't matter. And I know they're both playing great, but there's no chance that should happen. They played head-to-head, -head, head -head and they matter. won. And another matter. thing is, is, some people think if Georgia is to lose, based on what the score looks like now, would they still potentially get in? And still, Texas has the conference championship as a 12-1 team over Georgia in that case. Chaos. Chaos, Chaos, Chaos. baby. <laughs> With a capital K, I know that's not how you spell it. All right, let's welcome in our college football guru. Bear, let's get in on this conversation. Let's use the playoff committee's criteria, all right? With that in mind, how should Texas be viewed? I think if you're look, if you're looking at it, if Alabama does hang on, and if you're looking at the Texas Alabama head to head, that matters. You look at the college football playoff criteria. It's conference championships won. It's head to head uh, results. It's availability of players. All of that is written in their criteria. I don't know how you can take Alabama and not Texas. You can take both. You can take Texas over Bama, but you cannot just take Alabama over Texas. They went to Tuscaloosa. They won the game. There have been two times this year where a top 10 team has lost on its home field. Number one was Texas over Alabama. Number two was Michigan over Penn State. That win has to count for something. So I think if form kind of holds here, I, I think it should be Texas, Michigan, Alabama, and Washington, even though I do think there's a debate that Georgia will be better than Washington, but they would have that conference champion. I, I don't know how you could look at Florida State right now with the team that they have, with no Jordan Travis, and say that team is better than the Texas team that we saw today and in the last couple of weeks with viewers in all of those weapons. It, it sounds cruel, it sounds unfair, but that's what it is. And, and Sark and you guys have been talking about it. Not every one loss conference, not every one loss record in conference is created equal. Texas is 12 and 1, I think, would be better than Florida State's 13 and 0 based on who the Noles are right now. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.